Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back, family. We are starting our new book, okay? I've been telling y'all about this for about a month now, so if you ain't on it, shame on you. We are working out of the uh, Dr. Mao's book. And it is entitled Understanding the Purpose and Power of Prayer. My Lord, it's about to go down, y'all. This is going to be an excellent lesson. We're going to be starting with Lesson 1, Chapter 1. I'm going to be starting in a little bit of the introduction, just so you can get a little bit of feel. And then we're just going to do like we normally do and just go straight to the questions. After that, we're just going to do round robin with each question. And then if we want to have a little discussion afterwards, then we'll you know, follow through. So let me just open with prayer and then we're going to jump on into it. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for giving us the opportunity to come before you, Lord God, and learn your lesson, Heavenly Father. We ask right now, Lord God, that you remove any wickedness, any unforgiveness, any spitefulness, any evil, any anything that is not like you in our hearts, Heavenly Father. Purge it out. Sanctify us now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you right now, Heavenly Father, for opening up our spiritual eyes and opening up our spiritual ears so that we may hear. We ask right now, Heavenly Father, that you forgive us for all our sins, Lord, known and unknown. We ask also, Heavenly Father, that you descend your spirit of wisdom upon us, Lord God. Also, your spirit of knowledge, understanding, discernment, revelation, and clarity. We thank you for it now, Lord God. We ask that you help us rightly divide this word as we write it upon our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. amen. All right. Amen. I'm going to be starting on page 13 in the introduction, just to give the people that may not have a book a little bit of background, but you probably already heard because you looked at the little eight minute video. So here we go. It says the foundation of prayer. It says, to understand the principle of prayer, it is necessary to understand the mind and purpose of the creator himself. Prayer is a result of God's established authority structure between heaven and earth. As we as a product, um, as we, as well as a product of his faithfulness to his word, prayer is as simple as respecting God's authority. This is because prayer was born out of God's arrangement for man's assignment on earth. It happened when the creator spoke two words during the creation process, let them, come on somebody. These words are recorded in the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1 verses 26 through 27. Um, the creator mandate for man to dominate the earth was established in the declaration by this um, parameter of that dominion, which was established with his word, let them. Then it goes on to say, by these words, the creator defined the boundaries of his right to legally influence and interfere in the earth realm. This is very important. This is based on the principle of God's integrity and his commitment to his word. Why is this so important? Because of these four principles. And now I'm going to list the principles. The first one is God's purpose is more important than our plan. Number two, God has placed his word above even himself. Number three, God will never violate or break his word. And number four, God's holiness is the, is the foundation of his integrity and faithfulness. So now I'm going to just jump over here to this little part right here. And it says, um, the fact that he places his word above all things, including his name, is an important principle because one of the Hebrew concepts for, for name is the being, right? Just the being, which is it's being itself. Therefore, in application, God places his word above himself, submitting himself to the um, dictates of his own word. Because he made the rule, he also got to follow it, amen? He's not going to break his own rule, basically. In effect, whenever God speaks, he himself is willfully obligated to obey his own word. Therefore, any law of God is a law to God. He 
He is faithful to his word at all costs. The beginning understood, I mean, this being understood, we can appreciate the implications and impact of these initial words spoken by the creator at man's creation. Let them have dominion over the earth. Again, you can find that in Genesis 126. Please note that he did not say let us, but rather let them. With this statement, God created seven primary laws. And I'm going to name the primary laws and then we're going to get into the questions, okay? So it says the legal authority, this is the first, this is the first law. Now listen. It says the legal authority to dominate earth was given to mankind only. So when you're talking about why is God allowing this? Why is God allowing that? No, why are you allowing that? Because he gave us the meaning of this, of this world. If we just follow his commands and instructions, we'll be all right. But we, we're the one that's making it go, go crazy, not him, okay? Number two, it says God did not include himself in the legal authority structure over the earth. The next one says man became the legal steward of the earth domain. Next one, man is a spirit with a physical body. Therefore, only spirits with physical bodies can legally function in the earth realm. The next one, the next law, any spirit without a body is illegal on earth, which has got demons in there and his minions, okay? Because they always looking for a body to get into. So they're here illegally. Mm. Says any influence or interference from the supernatural realm on earth can only legal can only be legal through mankind, meaning a covenant has to be made. Okay. God himself, who is spirit without a physical body, made himself subject also to this law. The next one says the followings are the results of these laws, which are established by God himself. The legal authority on earth is in the hands of humankind. Let me repeat that for the people in the back. The legal authority on earth is in the hands of humankind. The next one says the creator, because of his integrity, will not violate the law of his word. Come on. Nothing will happen in the earth realm without the active or passive permission of man because he gave us dominion. Come on, and nothing with that spirit cannot operate here. So it says, with this, with who is its legal authority, which is us? Next one says, the creator and the heavenly being cannot interfere in the earth realm without the cooperation or permission of mankind. The last one says, God must obtain the agreement and cooperation of a person for whatever he desires to do in the earth. This is why it's so important when you receive God in your heart, right? Because you're giving him legal right to come down here on earth and interfere in your affairs. Without you accepting him in your heart, he's not going to do it. He ain't going to force you. That's why you have free will to accept him in your heart. Now you have given him permission to lead your life. You have to give him that permission. You have to welcome him in, open up the, open up the door to your heart. That's why we say that prayer, okay? So now let's go on... Uh, Oh, let me read this little part right here, too. Um, yeah, this is important. It says, prayer is man giving God the legal right and permission to interfere in earth affairs. Prayer is man's giving heavenly earth license to influence earth. Prayer is a terrestrial license for celestial interference. Prayer is man exercising his legal authority on earth to invoke heaven's influence on the planet um these these scriptures and they have they have a list of scriptures here but i didn't read them and it says these scriptures give mankind the authority and prerogative to de determine what happens on earth in fact a careful biblical study of god's dealings with mankind and the earth reveals that he did nothing on earth without the cooperation of a person i'm just gonna read this last paragraph y'all because this is important it says, every action taken by God in, earth, in the earthly realm requires the involvement of a human being. To rescue humanity in the flood, who did he use? Noah. For creation of a nation, he needed Abraham. To lead the nation of Israel, he needed Moses. To bring back Israel from captivity, he needed David. To defeat, to defeat Jericho, he needed Joshua. For the, for the preservation, uh, I don't know if I said that right. But of, of the Hebrews, he needed Esther. For the salvation of mankind, he needed to become a man. 
So even he, that's why he even couldn't break his law. That's why he had to come in the flesh because you only can be human to operate here in this earthly realm. He had to come down here in the flesh so that he can operate and get things done. So with that being said and understood, let's move on to the question. Hallelujah. So number one, Amen. it says questions for reflection. It says, do you feel that you receive answers to your prayers? Why or why not? And my answer is yes and no. Okay. I say yes and no. And I said some was lined up with his will and some prayers were not. And or my faith and belief was not there to manifest the promise. So um, my faith was not there to probably manifest the promise nor receive what I'm trying to say is I didn't receive it and believe it the moment that I prayed it. And that is a prerequisite in order for your prayers to come to pass. So I said, yes and no. Some of my prayers might've been, was lining up with the word of God and some of them wasn't. I was just being selfish. Like the Bible said, his, he said, according to my will, he'll answer it, not your will. So I know some of my prayers might not got answered because I was praying selfishly. So that was my answer for number one. Amen. Come on, Sister D. You know, you number two. <laughs> all right. you said do which number number one we all doing number one and two oh. my acting up okay all right number one do you feel that you receive answers to your prayers why or why not oh yes affirmative i do simply believe in the answer to prayer um and it's you know i i believe that the lord either said yes no or wait and prayer uh, is, um, there are many prayers in the Bible. So, and I believe all those prayers that were uh, petitioned in the Bible. So, uh, yes, I do believe uh, that, my, that I receive answers to my prayers. And I remember when I was a young girl, my grandmother used to say, when we called her Big Mama, she used to say, prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. So I believe that too. Amen. 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 Okay, Frankie, you could go. <laughs> I said yes, eventually. Um, I guess it, it, it's in his timing, so it may not come when I want it, but eventually it shows up. Um, I, I don't pray for, I know back in the day, I didn't think I knew how to pray. So I, I found myself not asking for stuff because I didn't know if I was doing it right. But lately, uh, I feel that I am and my prayers are getting answered. Come on. Amen. So, like I said, it may not come when I think it should, but it comes eventually. So I'm going to leave it at that with yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, and. Mine is basically like what Frankie said. I have prayed for things, offered for the people, and some of them have been answered, and some I'm still waiting on. But like she said, it comes at his at his own time, where his time may feel like one minute for him, where it feel like weeks for us. But yeah, my okay. answer is here. Amen. Okay, Wanda. Oh, yes, and yes, and yes. My answer is, um, do I feel uh, that you receive answers from your prayers? Yes, I do, because I prayed a lot, and I've been in situations, and um, I prayed my way out of them, and um, a lot of my prayers have been answered, because I've always lived, I didn't know this, but I've always lived my life on faith because that's all I had to hold on. So um, I believed and you have to, when you set out to pray, you have to believe in your heart that it's going to come to pass. And I've always done that because I, the, I, I can just say the life that I have, that I had lived, I had to live on faith. I put it like that. And, and the Lord brought me through it. So yes, my prayers are being answered. Yes, Amen. yes, 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 and yes. Amen. Amen. All right, Taylor. I said yes and no. 
I feel and know it is not in my timing, but God's. So I know I have had some prayers answered and believe I receive already the ones that have not yet manifested. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Okay, number two. And this is again for everybody. Like we said, we know it's kind of the same, but just bear with miles. Okay. It says, if you have if you haven't felt that your prayers have been answered either in general or in specific situations, what effect has this had on you? How has it made you feel about prayer, God and yourself? I said, it made me study and evaluate myself. Um, I had to ask, what was I asking for? Was it for me or was it to glorify God? Um, I had to ask myself, um, what I say, it made my prayer life, oh, it made my prayer life more intentional. It made me draw closer to God and intimate and had more intimate time with him. And I also put that, um, I know that prayer works. So, Amen. yeah. So I, I, that's what I put to that answer because it was asking like three parts. How did, what made, if it made you, what made you, how did you feel about prayer? That it makes, it's, I mean, more intentional about it, um, that it draws me closer to God and more intimate with him. And I do it because I know it works. And I know that's my main line of communication to the father. Mm, awesome. Amen. Amen. Jesus. So that was my answer. Amen. Okay, come on, D. Oh, D got off. Okay, hopefully you can get back on. Let's move on to Frankie. Um, if you haven't felt, um, sometimes I don't feel like my prayers are answered, but I just trust and believe <laughs> that maybe it was something I wasn't supposed to have. Maybe I was asking for something that God didn't want me to have or I wasn't supposed to have. So in that sense, but for, for the most part, I normally... <laughs> Pray for for his for his strength, his his wisdom and and knowledge, because I feel like if I got that strength and knowledge and and the um, understanding, that it's gonna lead me to get what I need or what I want. So, Amen. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> so well. that, yeah. So and I and I also pray for the strength in in what I may see as difficult times. Sometimes I have to just let go and let him lead me. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, Ann. Uh, my answer on this, let's see if you haven't felt that you're free. I feel they've been answered. I wasn't thinking about this until actually, say, yesterday or maybe today. When I was thinking to myself, I had prayed that um, all this medicine and stuff I take, like give me a rest on it sometime. And now going on five weeks, I haven't taken any chemo pills or anything like that, only because, Man. only because when my blood work come back, a particular item in my blood work, they want it to be at a certain point. And for the last five weeks, it hasn't been. So they put it off for me taking any kind of medicine and any of that. So it's like giving my body a rest. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I do believe he answered my prayers. And I didn't think about it before, but then I thought about it yesterday and I said, God, it's going on five weeks. I haven't taken chemo or had an infusion or any of that stuff. And it's like my body is kind of resting now. Yeah. Before I start up again. Yeah. yeah, purging up. Well, we don't want to start up again. We want the healing to come super. Well, I want it to. I want it gone. Amen. Yeah. It's Jesus Jesus name. Name. Amen. So right the now, process. right now, and, and right now, what I'm going through right now with these five weeks coming up, I believe it. It was answered that he's giving my body a rest before whatever else happens amen, amen. Come on. amen. It's, it's, it's just that small paying attention paying attention yes. yeah i love it i love it yeah. um 
we're gonna go to um, Wanda, and then we'll go to back to you, B, so you can get settled in. We know you dropped off, so come on, Wanda. Okay. Um, well, my answer to that is. Um, oh, oh. You know, um, I, I'm just, I, 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 I just. You want to pass? Okay. Come on, hey, Sister B. Hey, man. <laughs> I, <laughs> we know that's a pass. Yeah. Ready Thank for number you. Two, yeah, and this, I don't know two. what's going on here. That was a lie. We rebuke him in the name of Jesus. She's Amen. nice. We're on number two. Dean. So what was the question? Number two. Everybody's answering number two. Okay. Uh, should I go now? Yeah, it's your turn. We can't hear you from talking. Can you hear me? Now we okay. Can. All right. So number two, uh, if you haven't felt that your prayers have been answered, either in general or in a specific situation, what effect has this had on you and how has it made you feel about prayer, God, and yourself? And I said, no doubt, I know that my prayers have been answered um, ever since, uh, as I mentioned before, I was a young girl. And then so how does it make me feel? How does it make me feel about prayer? Well, prayer works. That's how I feel about that and about God. God is God is able. And then and I have no doubt about it. That's how I feel my as for myself. Amen. 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 Short Amen. answer. Okay. Taylor. I said, as stated above, I know if it's his will for my life it will manifest. So I continue to thank him and I feel good about prayer, God, and myself. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, so now is round robin time. And Man. so everybody's just going to take a question. And if the person answers something that you have something different, feel free to um, let us know what you got. Okay. So it's back to me, number three. And it says, this is entitled Exploring God's Principles and Purposes. It says, what is a major obstacle that stands in the way of a life of true faith? Um, and my answer is unanswered prayer. Amen. 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 Okay. Everybody got Amen. that? Ditto, ditto, yeah. right? Amen. Okay. So B, go ahead. Yeah. Is it on me now? Yes, yeah, number four. Can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Number four says, um, for many people, the practice of prayer is merely a, and still in the blank, a re religious exercise. And then one that isn't concerned with obtaining and the blank is results. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's what I got. Okay, Frankie Amen. number five. What is one way we can measure how much the average Christian believes in the effectiveness of prayer? And it said we can measure how much the average Christian really believes in the effectiveness of prayer by the small number of people who attend prayer meetings in our churches. Amen. Amen. That's it. Um, Wanda, no, Ann, number six. Okay. Now, number six, you want me to read all of those, or how do you want me to do that? Because it's six. Yeah. So... yeah, that's your answer, girl. Okay. <laughs> okay. List five consequences of unanswered prayers. Okay, so it is a total of five, and it's on page 23. Amen. And the first one is, we feel abandoned and isolated from God. 
imagining that he doesn't care about our problems. As a result, we begin to doubt his love for us. We start to view him as someone who is against us or at least indifferent to us. Instead of us, instead of as a loving heavenly father who gives good gifts to his children. Number two, we question God's character and integrity. We may wonder, does God promise to answer my prayers or doesn't he? Can I rely on him to fulfill his word? In this way, he began to dis in this way we begin to distru distrust him, eroding our basics for belief and causing our relationship with him to suffer. Number three, we feel as if our lives are very unsettled and unstable. We may ask, can I really depend on God or is a prayer a, a hit or miss proposition? What can I really count on in regard to prayer? Therefore, we begin to rely on ourselves or on other people, groups, or beliefs instead of appropriating the power and promises of God to meet our needs. Number four, we come to premature conclusion, we come to premature conclusion about ourselves and our prayers. For example, when we try to make sense of why our prayers aren't working, we may assume my prayers aren't answered because I don't have enough faith. Therefore, we don't come to understand the various principles and truths concerning prayer that God has given us in his word for our benefit. And the last one, number five, we doubt our calling on God's inner intercessors. intercessors. I was trying to see what it looked like. Okay. We begin to think answer prayer must be only for an elite group of super spiritual Christians. In this way, we abandon a major purpose of God for our lives. Amen. 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 Anybody else have something to add? Nope. Okay. Wanda, you have number seven. Okay. What are the effects of confusion over prayer? Okay. And my answer is... A successful living lives in general um, because they simply don't know how or why to pray. And um, other Christians know some of the principles of prayer, but are not fulfilling their full potential as intercessors because they do not understand certain keys, the certain key aspect of prayer. Because they just don't know how. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Anybody get something different? I did. It's nothing different, but I did do some add-ons. Okay. okay. Um, let's go with, come on, Taylor, you go first. I put, um, prayer is not just an activity or a ritual, an obligation. It, it's communion and communication that touches God's heart. And then I also highlighted, I've come to recognize many of the obstacles that prevent prayer from being answered, as well as many of the principles of the effect of prayer. These principles are not obscure. They are readily available for you to begin practicing today. Amen? Amen. 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 And I had um, many Christians today are experiencing powerlessness, lack of direction. Mm -hmm. Little victory over sin, poor spiritual progress, a weak witness, unfruitful ministry, poverty, and other similar problems. Is there any connection between underdevelopment, defeated, or directionless lives and confusion over prayers? Amen. 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 All right. Okay. Taylor, your turn. Number... What is it, eight? Eight. Under what circumstances do God's will and word work in our lives? God's will and word do work when they are understood and put into practice. Whether you think so right now or not, prayer does work. However, it first needs to be understood. 
We must learn how to pray in a way that embodies the truths and principles of prayer that God has given us in his word. Amen. 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 Anybody has something they need to add? No, that's what I hear. Yep, me too. Okay, so it's back to me. Oh, man. Okay, number nine. It says, what results do true prayer bring out? And I said, it builds intimacy with God. It brings honor to his nature and character. It causes respect for integrity and enables belief in his word. It causes trust in his love. It affirms his purpose and will. And it operates. Um, does that operate? Approach. His promises. His promises. That's what I got. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so now we're back to D, and she's not here, so we're going to move on to Frankie for number oh. 10. Okay, why does God sometimes withhold answers to our prayers? And I put, um, so we will seek him and the principles of prayers that are essential for praying according to his will and for appropriating his promises and power. Amen. Yeah, I have that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. That same thing. So, um, and I also put he wants us to grow and mature. Definitely mm -hmm. that. Definitely that. Mm -hmm. Um, and okay, number eleven, praying without understanding or applying the principles of prayer is usually ineffective. Amen. 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 Don't know. So that's that's the way in the lesson, y'all. That was a quick one for the first oh, time. Sure so, was was quick. Quick. Um, so Sister Taylor, would you read the conclusion for us and close us on out with that? It's on page What's that? 32. What's that? Page 32. Can you close us out with the conclusion? Oh. Okay. Believers are called to be God's priests and ambassadors in the world through prayer and intercession. We have an effective prayer life. No, you can have an effective prayer life that will overflow into all other areas of your life when you discover how to approach God and learn the kind of prayers God responds to. It is God's desire that you experience intimacy with him and spiritual strength to fulfill his purposes. When you understand the biblical principles of the art of prayer, you will begin to communicate with God with power, grace, and confidence. These principles will help you to clear away the obstacle of unanswered prayer so that you can enter into a new dimension of faith, deep love for God, and power for service. Amen. Amen. And that is going to um, conclude our lesson. I did enjoy that lesson. It was quick and fast. It was. Guys, <laughs> is on board. Those of you who are watching the play playback, please put in the comments. Um, if you want to answer some of the questions, feel free to type them in there. If you got something different from what we had, just like we had to, like you had to add on to a certain question, just put pound sign that number and then write what you um, heard different or what you got out of the question. So you can be um, participating as well okay we would love that we would really love for you to be on here live with us but I understand the time zones and all that kind of stuff but the playback goes up every Friday I'll try to have it up by noon Pacific Standard Time or before okay so we're going to end there I thank you ladies for participating it's been an awesome um, week thus far tomorrow's Friday we're in a new month and time is flying okay so again we're just going to be always Moving with purpose. Where are you guys? Over, Over. here. Yeah.